Welcome to LCM. We are delighted to see you here today. Um, in this place, we believe God's love is for everyone, whoever you love, wherever you're from, whatever you believe, whatever you struggle with, whatever your joys, and we are delighted that you are with us today. I know we have some excellent announcements, um, which I am excited to uh, see, so take it away. I know it's early, but get in the rhythm of this because we've got some announcements and they all seem to have a similar theme. They all start with the letter B-B-B-B-B-B. B-B-B-B-B-B. Let me get my guitar. B-B-B-B-Blues and barbecue. Yes, I said blues and barbecue. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Next up, b -b 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 baseball, bats and balls. Run those bases, yes, oh yes. Come to Coors Field, look at those bobble necks. Let's root for the Rockies, yes, 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 yes. Okay, everybody, how about some clapping, maybe? <laughs> There we go. B -b 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 Build for habitat. Buckets, nails, hammers, and hard hats. B -b 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 Build for habitat. B -b 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 Build for habitat. Ready for one more? One more. Here we go. B -b 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 Backpacks for the Action Center. Our goal is 100. I think we're 44. We can do it. Yes, we can. That's all I got. Thanks a lot. <laughs> As you can see, we have a lot going on in this wonderful church, and we hope that you will join us <laughs> for some of these great events. Um, what was that? Who did write that song? <laughs> that was great. Next time I get tired of writing a sermon, I'm, I'm pulling you all up. <laughs> all right. All um, right. If you signed up for my installation, please make sure you come next week. We have church at 9 a.m. and then the installation at 1, so it'll be a busy day. But remember, there are two separate services, and you are welcome, and we would love to have you at both. Um, if you have not signed up for food yet, I'm sorry. You are always welcome, and God loves you, but we will not have food for you. So <laughs> um, let us worship. God has shown us what is good and what then is required of us. Jesus says, anyone who welcomes you, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. All are welcome here. Let us worship God. Please stand in body or in spirit for our songs.
God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us. Some escape us. Some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. God forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away your sin. Approach your God in peace. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 7, verses 15 through 25. Life, cap life captive to sin is a catch-22 existence in which we know good but do not do it and do things we know to be wrong. Through Jesus Christ, God has set us free from such a futile existence. The reading. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my innermost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Eyes and body or in spirit for the gospel reading. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus chides people who find fault with both his ministry and that of John the Baptist. He thanks God that innocence and trust are all that are required to receive what God offers. Be to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. 
yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you are the... All you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. So sin is actually a difficult topic for me. You wouldn't think so, given that it's a staple of Christian theology and I'm a pastor, but it is. And as I was once describing my struggle to a therapist, she put it succinctly. You've been fed a Jesus loves you, you sack of, I won't say what she said from the pulpit, theology. And she was right. I'd learned all about Jesus' love, but in a way that had taught me that I was worthless and unlovable. Many people have been fed a theology that emphasizes their sinfulness so fully and labels them as sinful just because of their gender identity or sexual orientation that it is nothing short of blasphemous because it ignores the many teachings of the Bible and church that tell us that we are made in the image of God and delighted in by God, that God longs to be with us, so much so that God took on a human body and lived and died as one of us and rose again so that we could know divine love everywhere and in every circumstance, so that even the grave is not beyond God's love and life. God makes us out of love and for love. This belief in human dignity is so baked into good Christian theology that it makes its way right into the baptismal covenant of my home church, the Episcopal Church. Right alongside the other promises we make when we are baptized, when we are asked, will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? We say, I will, with God's help. And I believe that vow should extend even to our teachings on sin in the church. Talk of sin should never be used to denigrate someone's identity as a woman, a queer person, a BIPOC person, as it sadly has throughout history and even today. It has taken me a while to heal from learning that as a bi woman, I was somehow more sinful just because of my gender and sexual orientation. But as I have come to a place of acceptance and have come to know God's love to my very core, I have also come to understand the doctrine of sin in new ways. Paul's letter to the Romans becomes very personal in this week's reading. He cries out from his very depths as he wrestles to do what he knows is right, but finds himself constantly returning to what he knows is wrong and doesn't want to do. Anyone who has struggled with an addiction can likely relate deeply to Paul's despair about his inability to overcome what he wants to overcome. But I don't think you need to have struggled with a drug addiction or alcoholism to relate to that feeling of despair when we long to be better than we are, but find ourselves again and again mired in a destructive pattern of behavior or horrified at ourselves after having lashed out at a loved one or having engaged in some sort of unethical behavior. It can even feel as if something has taken us over as we do or say something we couldn't have ever imagined ourselves capable of. And the longer we live and the more honest we are, the more we know we are capable of horrible things just as much as we are capable of wonderful things. And even if we manage to live our personal lives perfectly, We're each mired in a whole web of systems, many of which exploit people or damage the earth. And as much as we might try to be conscious of how our purchases or investments might be linked 
to sweatshops or enslaved labor or how our consumption affects the environment, it is almost impossible to completely extricate ourselves from systems that cause harm even as they benefit us. The more attention we pay to the problems in ourselves and our world, and the more we try to live well and spend our lives in pursuit of making the world a better place, the more aware we become of how much is unjust and even death-dealing. It can become easy to just despair, to give up, or to become cynical. But then we are pointed to Paul's next heartfelt cry. Who will save me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We do not have a God who floats high above us, immune to human suffering, aloof and uncaring. Instead, Emmanuel, God with us, is an incarnational God who was born in the mud and muck of a stable and walked and continues to walk among us, with us in our suffering and struggle promising us the resurrection power to overcome what we cannot overcome on our own. Thanks be to God, indeed. When the world's injustices seem just too much for me, I often turn to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He knew at a depth I will never know the human capacity for evil as he lived under Jim Crow laws, saw children killed at the hands of bombers, and was attacked by police guard dogs for peacefully marching. And yet, his faith inspired him to believe that, quote, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. His activism was deeply rooted in his Christian faith, and his belief that the goodness and love of God actively work alongside humans to bring about true transformation in the service of justice. We are not alone. And even when our actions toward good feel smaller than a mustard seed, we are promised that that mustard seed can become a towering tree. A small fish and a loaf of bread offered in love and service can become a feast to feed a multitude. Such is the grace and power of our God. Our gospel today points us to hope and comfort as well. The world is a place that turns on prophets like John the Baptist and rejects their call to transformation as too hard and too gloomy, and then turns and also rejects the joy and love offered by a dancing, partying Christ. But there is still hope. When we are too weary from wrestling with ourselves or with the world's evils and finding that our own efforts are not enough to overcome it all, we have Christ's promise of rest. We can come to our God like an innocent child runs to a loving parent, knowing that they will be offered help and comfort, not condemnation or shame. Emmanuel will come and walk with us and promises us that even if not right this second, even if not this decade, resurrection will transform every place of death and destruction in ourselves and in our world. But... Here's the twist. This doesn't let us off the hook. Jesus doesn't promise that he will simply make it all better. Instead, he asks us to take his yoke upon us and learn from him. In our non-agrarian society, this is a kind of a strange image for us, because what is a yoke? Well, it's a wooden cross piece that is put over the neck of two animals and then attached to a plow or a cart that they are to pull. So Jesus doesn't offer to pull the cart with the world's burdens in it all on his own. Instead, he says, come, carry these burdens right alongside me. We will do this together. And as you are linked to me in this work, you will learn, you will be transformed by my example and company, and you will find that the work that seemed so impossible is light indeed. When there is so much self and world improvement to do, it seems counterintuitive to rest, to contemplate, to pray, to go out into nature to study scripture, to do whatever it is that connects us to God. There's just so much to do after all. But that hike or period of silence and rest may be exactly what we need. 
Our gospel tells us that we need to do those things that help us to become aware of Christ's gentle, loving presence with us. The more we can come to him like that young child running to a loving parent, the more we can be energized to do the work before us. And then the more we enter into God's work to transform the world, the more we will know Christ. We are offered a win-win solution to our exhaustion, our cynicism, our self-hatred or despair when we encounter sin that we cannot overcome on our own. Friday night, I attended an Indigo Girls concert, and the singer-songwriter Garrison Starr opened the show. She told a heartbreaking story of growing up gay in an evangelical Christian community where her supposed friends outed her when she was very young and vowed to tough love her into repentance. I teared up as I heard her story because it is the story of so many children and teens who are damaged by a religion that is meant to provide them hope and love, not shame and condemnation. And then I really teared up when she began to talk about the years of anger and resentment she felt as she had to heal from that damage and the freedom that finally came as she worked her way into a new understanding of the gospel as one of love and hope. As part of her recovery from a faith that damaged her, she has created an album, not yet released, called Garrison Star and the Gospel Truth. On that album, she covers the traditional gospel song, There Ain't No Grave, and she performed it Friday night. As she belted out the words, there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down, there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down, when I hear the trumpet sound, gonna get up out of the ground, there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down, I was undone. I watched as a beautiful child of God who was rejected so young for her God-given identity, claimed resurrection and reclaimed the language and religion that once hurt her. That is the business and work Christ is up to, bringing love out of hate and life out of death. That is what we can be up to when we work alongside our gentle Savior and take his yoke upon us to carry this broken world's burdens. In Christ, even death, Even the grave, even that which causes us to lose hope, cannot overcome the love that is at the center of all things, working to redeem the world and bring us all into the loving arms of our Creator, who made us out of love, who made us for love, who loves us through and through. Amen.
confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. O oh God of the covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world. Inspire pastors, deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word as they carry out your work. Hear us, O oh God. God of all creation, you reveal your goodness through all you have made rivers and seas, plants and animals, and endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. Hear us, O oh God. God of the nations, you desire that all the peoples of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders at all levels, national, state, province, and local, to work for justice, mercy, and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, and well-being to those who are distraught. Send skilled caregivers to all in need especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. And make your presence known among all who suffer. Hear us, O God. God of rejoicing, you have brought us together this day to worship around the word and sacrament. Encourage children in their learning and growing, and watch over those who are absent today. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment. Hear us, O oh God. God of all faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all the contexts we encounter. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend for all whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Your support is vital to God's ministry at LCM and beyond. We do not pass a plate here, but we invite you to offer Place your offering in the plates in the back of the worship space or give online through Vanco Simply Giving. Hospitality, a warm welcome is generosity. When we welcome each child of God into the life of this church, we extend God's own generous hospitality. Our gifts help this graceful ministry to flourish and to grow and to give glory to God. Let us gather all of our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. Creator God, we marvel in awe of the expansiveness of your creation. Your margins of diversity are boundless, and for that we thank you. Each of your beloved children, of all races, cultures, sexes, genders, faith, are beautifully and wonderfully made, all in your image. Teach us to receive one another as God-given gifts, embracing each other fully as you have embraced us. Use our gifts to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord.
God is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. On the night on which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Please rise in body or in spirit for the Lord's Prayer. We lift our prayer to you using the words recited by all generations, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is not the table of Lutheran Church of the Master. This is not the pastor's table. This is the Lord's table, open to all. Come and eat. The gifts of God are for the people of God.
these rise in body or in spirit. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace. For you are Lord forevermore. Amen. God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, the Creator, Jesus Christ, the Savior, and Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Go in peace to love and serve God and God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.